Hi, I'm Jamie Miller, registered SQF consultant and food safety consultant at Kellerman Consulting, and you are watching our video series on environmental monitoring programs. An environmental monitoring program is a government required process of using specially designated sponge samplers or swabs that are rubbed on targeted areas of a facility and then analyzed for the presence of specified bacteria or other microorganisms. Environmental monitoring is used in combination with cleaning and sanitizing programs to assure that a company who handles and processes food checks target areas for signs that dangerous pathogens, which may cause food poisoning, are not in the facility. Pathogens can be microorganisms, bacteria, viruses, fungi, or protozoa, or other organisms such as parasites, worms, and even infectious proteins known as prions. And if pathogens are discovered in the facility, it is imperative that they are effectively removed before they can get anywhere near the food or food packaging materials, but first we have to find them. Throughout this series, we are going to review all of the required components in setting up an environmental monitoring program. We will evaluate the main organisms a, a facility should consider at the start of a program and review what resources are available to perform environmental monitoring on an ongoing basis. Let's begin with the basics of implementing and operating an environmental monitoring program for food and food packaging facilities. To do so, we are going to start with what an environmental monitoring program is for and what the first steps are in setting this program up. As we begin our discussion with the requirements of an environmental monitoring program, the first step to consider is looking for and actually finding either indicator organisms or pathogens in your facility. It is up to each company to determine what organisms they will swab for based on risk. The company will swab for organisms that are most likely to grow in their manufacturing environment. That's right, we are swabbing to produce positives in our environmental program. You may be asking, how on earth is it possible that it's a good thing to find any bacteria in your facility? So let's talk about why that is. We recognize that nobody wants to have the presence of an organism that could cause food poisoning or may cause spoilage in the foods you process or handle in your facility. However, the reality of the situation is that bacteria, which may be pathogenic, is involuntarily introduced into most, if not all, food facilities and it's important to demonstrate that you are addressing this concern quickly and efficiently before these contaminants do irreversible damage. Due to the fact a busy facility generally has large quantities of food and water within, we have to operate from a premise that the bacteria, mold, yeast, and other spoilage organisms have probably already made their way inside the facility, and our goal is to find them to understand how to safely control them. Because of that, we want to find the locations where those organisms are so we can remove them before they travel near or to the processing and handling areas of the facility. We want to look carefully for those organisms in order to assess the risk and further address them honestly and thoroughly when we do find them. We have now established that we need to swab designated surfaces with designated sampling sponges throughout our facility and have them analyzed for the presence of indicator organisms which can determine if dangerous bacteria or spoilage bacteria are present. We now need to introduce the basic structure of an environmental monitoring program. At this time, I am just going to introduce these concepts and we will look at each of these structural issues in greater detail in later episodes of this series. The first and most important structural issue for an environmental monitoring program is to determine a schedule for swabbing events. The schedule declares the quantity and frequency of swabs as well as a description of the locations requiring swabbing. It is not appropriate or useful to attempt to conduct environmental swabbing activities without having trained personnel to do it and creating a frequency that they are going to be performed. The reason for this is that depending on the operations throughout a day, 
week, month, season, or year in the facility, we may be more or less likely to find bacteria living or growing in the facility. For example, bacteria are much more likely to grow in warm, wet seasons than in very cold, dry conditions. The same is true as we bring in different types of food or other materials. Bacteria are much more likely to be present in fresh, fresh produce, dairy products, meat and poultry than in dry spices, salt or sugar. Just as we need to create an environmental monitoring schedule, we also need to limit the personnel that are going to perform the action of sampling GMP areas with the swabs and coordinating with a testing lab to get the results after the swabbing is performed. In-house or external laboratories have to run the swabs through carefully selected tests, and those results may indicate a dangerous organism could be present in the facility, so we have to be very careful not to contaminate or alter the swabs in such a way that may give false results. The more employees involved in the process, the less control we have to ensure that we can trust the results. Every employee involved in environmental monitoring must be trained on how to properly use the sponges, how to store sponges before and after use, how to document the swabbed areas, and where and how quickly to send them to a lab to get accurate results, how to document results, and lastly, implement corrective actions based on findings. Now that we have determined the most important aspects of an environmental monitoring program are proper scheduling of the swabbing and ensuring each person involved is trained on the entire process, we can look at one other critical aspect of environmental swabbing, food contact surfaces and non-food contact surfaces. A food contact surface is one that touches exposed food. Food contact surfaces may include cutting boards, knives or scoops, the insides of mixing bowls, and insides of containers, piping, hoppers, fillers, vats, tanks, or other processing equipment. Facilities operating as box in, box out have no food contact surfaces since food never leaves the packaging it comes in. As a general rule, you do not want to swab food contact surfaces for pathogens in an environmental monitoring program. The simple reason for not swabbing directly on food contact surfaces is if a positive result occurs, it becomes reportable to the FDA and any food that has come in contact with that surface that hosts the bacteria is subject to recall. It is catastrophic for a facility to randomly swab a contact surface and get back results that a pathogen is present on the surface. Instead, we rely on our cleaning and sanitation program to control those surfaces and if we need to test for the presence of pathogens, we test specific product lots, not the area that the product touches. The exception to this are meat and poultry plants that make ready-to-eat items and are required to swab food contact surfaces by the FSIS. For all other facilities, unless you are instructed to swab contact surfaces by a customer or a regulator, you should not swab any surface that food or food packaging touches. We'll get into swabbing food contact surfaces in FSIS facilities and the reasons for not swabbing food contact surfaces in all other facilities later in this series. In conclusion, aside from food contact surfaces, if we are successful in finding these organisms in places where they are not a threat to food, packaging, equipment, or clothing, we can clean and sanitize and monitor these locations without necessarily interrupting operations. For food contact surfaces, we are relying on validated cleaning and sanitizing methods to remove the risk of pathogens directly to product. In our next episode of the Environmental Monitoring Series, we'll review how to decide on the frequency of environmental monitoring throughout the year and how to properly schedule environmental monitoring activities with key personnel. Thank you for watching. For more food safety training videos and resources, please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel or follow us on LinkedIn.